Hi guys, this is Whitney, and I'm continuing my series on how I made my neoprene mermaid tail with part three, which is how I painted my mermaid tail. So I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope it's informative in case you guys want to make your own. So these are the paints that I used to paint my neoprene mermaid tail. These are just regular acrylic paints. I got them at the dollar store. They're really cheap ones. You don't need anything really expensive or fancy. And these are the colors I'm using because I want to create kind of a sunset look. So I'm using orange, yellow, and gold. To get the acrylic paint to work on fabric, because acrylic paint is usually pretty plasticky when it dries, you need to add textile medium. And textile medium, when you add it, makes the paint soak into the fabric better and makes it so that when it dries, it's not very plasticky and it stays flexible. So here is my mixed up paint with the textile medium added and I made three different shades by mixing different amounts of orange and yellow and gold. And I mixed them and made them in plastic Tupperware containers with lids so that I can keep the paint over multiple days because it takes multiple days to paint a tail properly. So here are just some pictures of my different stages of painting my tail. I started with the main body of the tail, starting from the U-shape at the bottom where the body meets the fluke. And I started painting the outside first, the outside color, then the inside color. And then from there, I used the middle shade to try to blend them together to create a gradient. To paint the fluke, I started with the one base color and I was using yellow for this because I wanted a nice sunshine-like fluke and I painted the whole thing yellow except for the top where it was going to be darker orange and then I blended the darker orange where the tail and the fluke meet to make a gradient look kind of like sun rays. I used some gold paint to make some streaks on the tail and it looks really nice but you can't really see it in the picture. Once the base color was painted onto the tail and it dried, it's time to paint the scales. And this is the stencil I used to paint the scales. It's a divider for a binder that I cut a scale shape out of. I like the scale shape that's kind of pointier at the end, but if you're doing it, you can use any scale shape you like. This is the paint I used. So I just used gold paint that's like metallic gold and I mixed textile medium into it so it works on the fabric. And here's a video of how I painted the scales on the tail. As you can see, some of them are already done. And so how I painted them is take the stencil, put it on the fabric, and brush upwards with your paintbrush. And you try to make it so that it goes about halfway up, because you don't want them to be too thin or else you can't see them. And don't worry about it being perfect. I actually like it if the scales are a little bit different and they're not all the same, because it adds a little bit of character to the tail. This is a picture of what I had to do to paint the scales that are closer to the edge of the tail along the seam. I stuffed the tail with, full of pillows to give it some shape so that I could paint the ones on the edges. And this is showing all the scales that I have painted along the edge where the seam is. You can see that the scales then go over the seam and they give it a nicer look. Once all the paint is dry, it then has to be heat set to ensure that it locks into the fabric and doesn't wear off. So for this, you can use an iron, but that takes a long time and I always worry about burning or melting the fabric. So I just take the whole tail and the top that I made and threw it in the dryer for about 15 minutes on low. And then it evenly heats and I don't have to worry about burning or melting the fabric. So 
this next step you don't necessarily have to do, but I wanted to make sure that certain parts of the tail that get the most wear, the paint didn't rub off on them. So I bought some silicone caulking. This is just regular silicone caulking from the hardware store. And what I did is I took the silicone and I spread it over the tips of the fluke because those are the parts that most often bump into things and rub on the bottom of the pool and get wrecked. So I didn't want that to happen, so I covered them in silicone to make them a little bit more durable. And here is the final tail, all finished.